Well, I'm out here building a platform that uh, the garbage cans can sit on so they're not sitting on the ground and ruining the grass. The neighbor had some of this plastic, whatever this shit's called, planking and stuff left. So he said, hey man, you want to have a bunch of this, this stuff? It's pretty expensive. I got a bunch left over. You can just have it and build your platform for your garbage cans. And then it's getting dark out here and I can't see. And then I remembered, wait a second, Rain Man Ray sent me this Astro LED light, work light, char magnetic charging base, wireless, for uh, Christmas. I wanted to try it out. And then it is super bright. It's got double lights on both sides. You can switch it off. You can go to just regular on. Lights up the whole area. Really freaking bright. Let me turn my light off on my camera. There you go. I mean, it literally lights up everything. And then you can switch it to front light. Off. Or you can switch it to both lights. I won't have a need to switch them. And I'm going to sit right here and finish this up. And put it over there and show you what it looks like when it's all done. With the garbage can sitting on it. Another cool feature about this light that I remember Ray was talking about is watch when you hold down this power button right here. It'll, it'll start and you can switch it between see it's getting dimmer and then it's getting brighter and then you can stop it where you want right at the brightest setting or you can dim it down if it's way too bright and you want to you don't want to mess with people passing by and we can just leave it on a low setting so we can finish our job and not blind people going coming by and my workspace is lit up so i can hurry up and finish let's go over here and check out what it looks like we're done. It's set up. There we are. A nice little platform for the garbage cans to sit on. I don't have to sit directly on the ground anymore. We've had rain so much, I had, I need to get out here and mow, but it's been like freaking rain, 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 non-stop. This stuff is nice. I like this material. This stuff is real nice. Rain Man Ray's Christmas gift to the rescue. I wanted to get done with this tonight. I didn't want it to carry over tomorrow. Now I'll be good to go. I got a lot of leftover wood from all the projects lately. I'll let you guys see what we got done today. We got more of the garage cleaned and sorted. I got more buckets of wood and leftover stuff in here that I got to go through. We got lattice put in where we wanted it anyway. I changed up my wa my lights to these more subtle lights because the other ones were they were kind of bright at night um, and also. I didn't like how far they stuck up out of the ground. I'm hoping this one comes back here and it just was not charged enough because it was in a pack. And I only had, gave it like an hour of sun before I actually put them in the ground. Or before I actually turned them on. So these are the ones that are flush mount to the ground. You just get a nice subtle light walking. Nothing too crazy. There's the lights all set up on the deck. It's finally finished. I gotta get the stain out now inspector out here next week i had a contractor come check it out for me today and he was like dude i don't see anything wrong with what you did yeah you messed up in a few spots here and there but he said for for what you have into this i would not hesitate to have you do mine and i do this for a living and uh he came over here he's the one that gave me all that planking and stuff and he said it looks great uh for a homeowner you did better than most contractors i've seen that made me really feel good. It really made me feel good. And, and I feel good about how I finished all this. And it's not perfect, but it's mine. And it meets code and it's safe and it's, it's very strong. What we did was we used that 10 year, 20 year, whatever, recycled rubber, rubber edging. And then rubber filled everything underneath there on top of the weed barrier. So uh, it had a nice look to it. And then we got to get more to fill in that area over to the garage next and we left the opening right there open so you can get the bigger 
blow up toys and stuff in and out yeah either next saturday or the saturday after i'm gonna have the guys come back out and help me finish all this uh doing the ceiling other than that my big projects are done for right now and uh i finished everything that i really needed to finish that was causing me stress and just making me worry about things the next thing I want to do, the next project I want to work on is that front sidewalk where the tree's growing under it, where it has grown under it over the years before we owned it, and pushed up a piece of the concrete. I want to get that tore out and maybe some of the root cut down right there and uh, maybe make a little piece of a sidewalk or redesign the sidewalk to make it look pretty cool and work with what's there instead of causing a big fuss and uh, making more of a project out of it. I seen a guy dig up his sidewalk and then he put a bunch of uh, dirt and stuff down and then he traced out the pat or the shape of the pavers and stuff he wanted to put in and he cut the depth of the pavers in just a little bit more and he dropped his pavers down like a puzzle and left gaps like spacing in between and let grass grow in between and then just kept it cut kept it trimmed and it looked really cool so I'm thinking about doing something like that well for right now that's honestly all I got I wanted to say I appreciate all the new subscribers I appreciate you guys uh, responding accordingly, whether it be negative or positive, it's helping the channel grow. Um, and uh, just, I appreciate you being here and interacting. Thank you as always. Uh, be blessed. And if there's anything in particular you guys want to see, I know I got a few oil things I got to share with you guys. I got some more testing I got to get done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been getting more involved in the projects in the shop because you guys are like, I want, we want to see you doing some more wrenching stuff. So I've been trying to give you that and try, taking a break away from the management and stuff during the day just to bring you some old nostalgia, you know, like old cars and stuff like that and some newer stuff today. Uh, it's kind of funny. I pulled up at Home Depot and there was like second gen, third gen, and fourth gen, fourth gen all F-150s just sitting in a row right there. And a guy came out and he was walking out to his... Um, not first gen, I mean uh, the Coyotes, I should say, or that generation of, uh, of trucks. But it was, I made a mistake right here. The 12th gen is the one that was in the parking lot. The two that were in the picture are 13 and 14 gens. I'll post it right here so you guys can see. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then in the parking lot, about 30 feet away, the guy coming out of Home Depot was like, "Fuck, oh, man, you don't see this every day." And he was like, as I was taking the picture, he was like, "That's pretty dang cool." Boom, 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 all body styles in a row right there. And I was like, "Yeah, that is pretty neat." He said, "Now look over there, that red one. That's mine. She's mint. She ain't got no rust or anything. I'm from Illinois, but I moved to Wisconsin, and still, she still ain't got no rust. It stays in the garage." And it's a 543 valve, and he says, I absolutely love the thing. I absolutely love it. And he said, all I do is keep the oil change in this thing, and I run, what did he say? He runs a 5W40. 5W40 or 10, I don't know what it was, 5W40 or 10W30. It was like a weight that it was just above what we'd normally run. Like, I run 5W30, and I was like, oh, that's just the next step up or something. And he was like, that's all I run in that truck. And I, I change the oil every 3,000 miles, and it ain't never left me stranded. And he said, if, if I had a chance to buy another one, I'd go buy another one. And uh, so, so you ain't had the problems everybody else has. And he said, no, I change the plugs every 40,000 miles. I change the oil every 3,000 miles. I change my coolant and everything else every 30, 40,000 miles. I ain't never had a problem with the truck. It's dang, man. It's just regular maintenance. Yep, that's it. So, uh, yeah, projects are caught up now. Now I'm uh, back on back on the cars so here's here's a i'll give you guys a little sneak peek of uh kind of what's coming up and you let me know what you want to see somebody called me up and said hey rich i got a 6r80 mated to a 13 5.0 out of an f-150 it's got 177,000 miles on it but it runs like a top got the harness the computer everything i know you got that old thunderbird that you still want to find an engine for it would be the perfect swap for it and it's not hard to do it at all I'll call you back Monday with a real good price. Maybe you could swap it in that Thunderbird or pull that 255,000 mile 462 valve. It's crystal clean. The transmission works great in the thing. Out of your uh, your uh, ice blue town car, maybe you could put that 5.0 in it. It'll, it'll drop right in that, that too. So I called up an engine builder that I know he deals with nothing but tuning and building Mustangs. I'm talking like 1,000, 2,000 horsepower, big, big, big money cars. 
And I says, hey man, what do I got to do to that 85? I figure, people are telling me that I can't swap fo Fox body parts into it, and I can, and I can't. What's the story? And he said, no, there's a lot of stuff you can do to it. People just don't know what they're talking about. And he said, if you take like a, a 96, I think it's like 94 and above, but he said, I just tell everybody, find a, find a uh, K member out of a 96 Mustang, it swaps right into that. You pull that factory K member out of that 85 Thunderbird, and you put the 96k member from the mustang in there and then you can get a whole tubular setup coilovers and everything for that car the whole front end redone with that new k member very little modification at all for like 1500 bucks two thousand dollars a whole front end of that car would be race ready and that five liter with that 6r80 and stuff will just drop right in there and you find like an edelbrock or a holly system to to uh, control it you know, thousand bucks, twelve hundred dollar kit with the harness and everything like that. You find a tuner and stuff after you get everything set up and tucked away the way you like it, and you're ready for tuning. We get that thing to fire right up. It ain't that difficult at all. The price of the engine, plus the the, the software and stuff you'll need, and you might be less than you know eight nine grand in that car and have a. a and then he said, "What I want you to do is I want you to take a third generation intake manifold off of a Mustang and drop it on that first gen F one fifty um engine and that we found when we're doing dyno testing flows better than any aftermarket part any intake that you can throw on there the third gen f-150 or the third gen uh, coyote intake from a mustang on a f-150 engine or a mustang engine or of a first gen bolts right up and the flow is phenomenal you, you're talking 412 with per, the, you know the bright tuning and stuff like that 430 435 440 depending on how it's tuned and that's without throwing a bunch of crazy parts on it now you throw a cam to it you throw some headers and stuff on it intake exhaust on it now we might be talking closer to 480 490 with a good intake just he said i'm just saying you could even squeeze more than that out of it out of it and it would be completely safe he said at first gen you could go up to like 800 horsepower 900 horsepower if if, if you do it right and uh you never have to touch a thing. You ain't got to slave the block. You ain't got to do any of that. It'll take every bit of it. So, wow. So we got options. We got options. Uh, what do y'all think? You think the five liter in the Thunderbird or the five liter in the town car? The town car's still running good, and the engine's perfect in that car, and the transmission's perfect in that car. I think if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't mess with it. Keep driving the car. Keep putting the miles on it and respecting her for what she is. And I'm thinking maybe at 90 or 100,000 miles, I might auction that car off here. Or do like a uh, a project drive, you know, uh, giveaway. Maybe donate to the Thunderbird cause and then we'll raffle off the car. Every person that donates something uh, gets points towards a raffle or something like that. And it, or maybe we just give the car away. Yeah, I don't know. What do y'all think? We got big stuff coming. Tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you want. Let's get her done. Y'all be blessed. Take care. Thanks, Ray, for saving the night. I wanted to get that project done tonight. And when I thought, oh, Ray's lights in the truck. Mm. I'll leave the link to that light so you guys can find it. It is a badass light. It's better than most of the lights you can find on the tool trucks and... You know, Harbor Freight and stuff like that. All those lights are good too. But this light that Ray sent, he knew it was a good light. It is a damn good light. And you don't even have to hook anything into it to charge it. You just drop it right back on its base and it starts charging. Take care.